Hi there guys, this is D Shasher here and today I'll be doing a different type of deck profile. Not Yu-Gi-Oh related in a way, but I've been playing this game for about a week or so and I actually kinda enjoy it. It's like a, it's anime based type of card game, so I like anime, so yeah. I decided to play a different type of card game because Yu-Gi-Oh was well at the moment yu gi is kinda boring and Konami hasn't really updated the the ban list at the moment. The April uh, 2000, 2016 balance hasn't been released yet, and other things, uh, yeah, they haven't been released yet, whenever this video was uploaded, so I don't know, uh, maybe they're released in a few days, maybe not, but this is when, before Yu-Gi-Oh got their new update ban list for uh, April or May, whatever, 2016, so yeah, uh, I decided to play this type of card game called Weishwartz, and yeah, uh, I made a Madoka Magica deck, which I bought a few booster boxes which I feel like I might have spent too much <laughs> but at the same time it's a pretty fun game it's it's well balanced it compared compared to Yu-Gi-Oh which like can finish in around five minutes or less depending on how much you can OTK and how <clears throat> how fast you play uh, Weishwartz can take a while to play but at the same time it, it's more lucky luck based and also uh, comes to power as well when their attack levels and stuff like that. Uh, but yeah, uh, this is a, my Madoka Magica deck. So yeah, I've been talking for about a minute and a half or so. And uh, yeah, this is uh, going to be. I'm going to start it right now. So for grade zeros, I run the uh, well level zeros, I should say. I'm used to saying grade because of Vanguard. Uh, I run three uh, Madoka's Battle with Open. Uh, I don't know how to say that. Oh, which not? I have no idea. It's a German type of name. Uh, pretty much with this one, it gains 1500 power. Uh, 1500 power, yeah, power for if you have two or less. Uh, if you have other uh, characters with uh, two or less other characters. Two, two other. It's pretty much if you control two other characters, two or less characters, it gains 1500, so it becomes a 3500 power beat stick. Uh, which is pretty strong for a level zero. Uh, two. Minoka, uh, sorry, Homura watches over. Uh, this is your typical brainstorm type ability. Uh, brainstorm allows you to, uh, it depends, it's more of a mill type of thing. So you check the top four cards of your deck, and Homura allows you, Homura watches, watches over you. Oh, oh Homura watches over. Pretty much this card allows you to, if you, depending on how many climaxes, now I'll get into climax in a second. Uh, climaxes are your uh, key damage in a way. Uh, key damage, not really say key damage, but you you kind of will understand if you play the, play the card game. It's pretty much things that changes your game and it depends on how lucky you are. Uh, during your turn, you can, uh, yeah, when you activate this effect, uh, you send the top four cards of your deck, or your library, I should say, from Magic Turns, to the waiting room. In this case, it's called the Graveyard for Yu Gi Oh! Turns. And, uh, yeah, and you. Uh, pay one stock. Now the stock is on the left hand side. Uh, it's pretty much when you attack you gain stock and pretty much when you attack you pretty much reveal the card and that card in Vanguard terms becomes your trigger check, you trigger check and then it goes to your stock which is your uh, cost area in which case you pay stock to activate uh, you, you activate resources. That's your resource file. So you pay one resource and you uh, Activate this ability, and brainstorm. You pretty much send the top four cards of your deck. You reveal the top four cards of your deck, and if one of them is a climax, depending on how many climax you uh, reveal, uh, they get sent to the waiting room, and uh, you get to search. I believe it searches. Yeah, you, you search for uh, magic-based characters. This since uh, this deck is kind of a magic-based deck, magic character-based deck. Uh, yeah, pretty much you. Pay one resource and you send the top four cards of your deck. And uh, if one of them is a climax, you search that many climaxes, uh, search many, that many characters, depending on how, depending on how, how many climaxes uh, you view. And I've been talking way too long for this type of explanation. Uh, this one's similar to the Homura card, except it's a blue type of character. And uh, yeah, it's pretty much when it's played on the field, you can check from your hand. Uh, sorry, check from your top of, top of library. Sorry, I'm not used to 
saying uh, Weishwartz terms anyway. Sorry, I feel like I'm kind of a newbie when it comes to uh, playing Weishwartz, but yeah, you pretty much play 3Ds. I'm just gonna... You can look at it, look these up, or you can pause the video and uh, read the cards and stuff like that, and you can do some research if you're interested in how to play Weishwartz. So I run three of that, uh, three of these, uh, three Kuroko Shares and Apple, uh, three Reverses, uh, Kyoko, uh, part subway station, I run three of those, and, uh, two, uh, QBA urges for a contract. So I run 16 level zeros. Uh, 16's are kind of a bit much, a little bit much, because level zeros you can usually play around 15 or so, uh, depending on how you want to, uh, play your deck in a way, how you want to, um, create your deck. Similar to you, you're like, uh, you have that many trap cards, you have many, that many spell cards, you have that many monsters you want to play. Uh, normally for monsters you play for, uh, you go, you play tw around up to 20. Uh, anymore, it's like, mm, it depends on your situation. Uh, but yeah, it's similar to this card, this card game, Wise Wars. It depends on how you want to build a deck. I run 16, uh, characters for level zeros because, well, I can and I have no room to take one out for 15, but I like 16. It's, uh, Good number, even number. I run uh, three vanillas, uh, three Saika, second grade. I don't know. I run three, three uh, vanilla blues. Uh, two uh, girl, magical girl of bows, Madoka. Uh, now at the top here is a grade one, and below this is a uh, cost. Cost is your resource, so you pay one resource from your stock area. And you can, and that's how you play these cards. You pay one resource, and that goes to the rating room, and you play this card. So yeah, and this card has a unique ability, which if you have four more stock or four more resources in your stock area, uh, you can. It this card gains a thousand, I believe. Yeah, it gains a thousand, so it becomes seventy five hundred, which is pretty good, in a way. Uh, two, Homer's hidden feelings. This card I don't really like in a way. At the same time, I kind of need because I don't really have any other cards I want to uh, replace with, because I don't have that many cards for green and stuff anyway, uh, and other stuff, so yeah. Uh, I run two type of backups, <clears throat> I run two backups, Kyoko, Rive Kyoko Rives, uh, uh, pretty much with backups, you can only activate a backup like in the uh, attack declaration of your opponent's uh, character, so when they attack you, you can play this backup from your hand, and if it has a cost, you play it. If not, then yeah. So yeah, um, two, of the, uh, two of these and allows you to gain 1500 power. So yeah, for this one, it gains 1500 power. Some say different types of powers, but this average for a level one is 1500. Uh, level two is in all those. Uh, they usually give around, I don't know, 3000, 2000, depending. It's kind of different. And also, I run one uh, clock based green character, the low one, it's, uh, uh, this guy, I can't read it from here, I forgot the name, <laughs> sorry, I'm not used to the same names, pretty much this has a shift ability, which, uh, during your main phase, if this card is in your waiting, sorry, not waiting, your clock area, your clock area is your damage zone, pretty much, uh, in this case, we, in the clock zone is your climax, uh, sorry, not climax, sorry, it's your damage area, so pretty much in Vanguard terms, if you hit if you uh, take six damage, you lose. But when when uh, in uh, White Squats, if you reach seven damage, you go up a level. So whoever reaches level four first loses. So yeah, that's pretty much uh, how this is. And with the clock area, with this unique ability, it allows you to uh, replace, pretty much exchange this card. Clock abilities have a unique uh, type of uh, card effect in a way. So with this one, it allows you to replace or exchange uh, a green character from your hand and put it into your clock area, and this card goes into your hand. So it's pretty good. It's a swap. So it does a lot of unique things when it comes to clock type of abilities. Uh, but yeah, I run one of these because, well, I only run one, so I don't think I would run two, but it has a unique brainstorm ability as well, because similar to the Homer Watches Over one, uh, this one allows you to, for each climax you reveal, you can choose, uh, depending on how many climaxes you reveal, you uh, give your characters 
uh, plus 2,000 for each one revealed. So it's pretty good. So you can make a, I don't know, a 5,500 blue character at the bottom of the vanilla becomes 7,500. And yeah, it's pretty good. Uh, for level f two, sorry, I nearly said level three. Uh, there are no level fours in this, just to let you know. So yeah, I don't run many level twos in this because you don't. Level twos are basically the uh, pre preparation stage for you to reach level three because level two is like the uh, kind of the orange area, or in this case, the middle zone, where it's like it's the standstill and pretty much yeah, it's standstill in the way it's pretty much the deciding factor. But if it reaches level 3 first, pretty much it comes in the danger zone. So if you reach level 3, you're in the danger zone. So it's quicker in level 3 than it is in level 2. Level 2 if you uh, is kind of orange, orange area. Run 2, Madoka Swain Feelings. Uh, this has a unique effect as well because it has a change ability. Uh, change abilities allow you to basically uh, level up. In this case, for Cosmo factors, if you play, if you play Yugo with Cosmo, you pretty much exchange. Uh, you banish one of your Cosmo pilots, and it becomes a bigger spaceship. In this terms, for uh, White Schwartz, uh, changes like a you swap out uh, until you uh, you swap out this character for a different character, so it becomes uh, either a level higher, pretty much. It becomes a little higher. So you swap this out for a level 3. Uh, it has a change uh, effect to change into this card, uh, Ultimate Madoka, which I'll explain right now, uh, actually, with Madoka's Wayne Feelings. Uh, pretty much what the change uh, is that you fulfill the condition to activate a change ability. Uh, when, uh, when you fulfill the change ability, uh, fulfill the requirements for the change ability, you activate it. So yeah, you activate it on when it's allowing you to activate it. So in this case, Monoka Swaying Feelings, it allows you to activate it in the uh, be beginning of your draw phase. So it's pretty much after the stand phase and yeah. So pretty much at the beginning of the turn you stand and then you draw. At the beginning of the draw phase you put this into your waiting room and pay the, the cost, which this card has a cost, which you pay one and from your resource area or your stock area, and it becomes a level 3 Madoka, uh, ultimate Madoka, in the place it was, uh, in the place where this card was originally located. So if this card's in the bottom area, you put it, put ultimate Madoka level 3 in the same place it was before. So yeah, I've been talking too much about uh, this card for a while, but it's a different type of uh, card, I want to explain, with changes. Uh, two Time Progressor Homura. Uh, time Progressor uh, Homura. This has a unique ability, in a way, uh, because it allows you to, pretty much every have five or less cards in your deck, Five or less cards, or is it four or less cards? Um, number of cards in five or less. Yeah, five or less. I was right. Uh, five or less cards in your deck. You can put the cards into your library and put them. Uh, sorry, put your cards in your waiting room into your library and shuffle. Uh, you don't deck out in this game, so it's really good. But at the same time, when you deck out, I mean, sorry, when you loot, uh, when you run out cards in your deck. And you're not using this card effect. Don't just let it just pretend this is not here. Uh, you when you deck out and you play your last, you draw your last card into your from your uh, library. Uh, you shuffle your waiting room or in this case your graveyard and put it back into your deck area and you take it damage. But with this one, it has a unique ability which allows you to shuffle your deck and your gra graveyard and with no uh, downside to it. So you shuffle your graveyard and your library, or deck and graveyard, I just keep saying library, uh, your deck and graveyard together and pretty much you don't pay the cost to uh, take your damage. So yeah, it's pretty good. For the other level 2s, I don't run any other uh, characters, but I do run events. So I run 2 uh, uh, Sayaka's Wish. This card is really amazing because it allows you to banish one of your... Uh, banish? Name in the wing. 
Oh yeah, pretty much you uh, heal. It's like a heal effect. Uh, I won't explain too much. You can research this card if you want to, if you want to uh, understand how it works. So I run three of those and uh, two uh, salvages. I run two salvage and two heal and three heals. So yeah, I won't explain too much because uh, I don't want to go in too much time. I run one, two, and three. I run three ultimate dockers. This one's an alternate artwork. It's also a hollow foil. Uh, but same card, same effect, just this one's foil. Uh, this one allows you to, when it's played, uh, when, it's, when you play it, either by a change effect, which I explained for, or uh, when you play it normally, which you have to pay two costs and to play on a field. Two costs from your library and you play on a field. Uh, you pay, uh, you, when this card's played, basically, uh, you heal. So you take one of your top cards of your clock area, you take one, uh, you pretty much heal one damage and put it into your winning room. So it's really good. And the other effect I don't really play because I don't run the other Homer card. So, yeah. Uh, in combination with Homer. Uh, there's another level 3 Homer in this, but I don't really play it. Uh, I run 2 uh, Saiki Mickey. This card is another heal based level 3 character. And it's really, really good. It also gains 500 points for each uh, other character you have on the field. So it is, you can only play 5 characters, so this card gains uh, 500 for each other character, so you gain 2,000 pretty much, so it becomes a 1,200 beat stick at level 3, which is kind of average in a way, but I run 2 of those, because I don't have a, I don't have 2 more copies, and I would probably, I would pretty much run 4 of these, 4 um, Ultimate Dockers and two, uh, 4 Sayaka Mickeys, if I have it. I do have 4 Ultimate Dockers, I just don't have 2 Sayaka, I don't just, have, I don't, I just don't have 2 more extra Sayaka Mickeys, so... I'm kind of uh, uh, playing budgetly, and also I run one Kyoko Sakura. Uh, this card pretty much is a, a salvage-based little free, so I like it. It's pretty good, but I would probably take it out for Saiki Miki if I have any more, if I get any more. So yeah, uh, but yeah, that's the uh, level freeze. Now for the climaxes, the all you've all been waiting for. Uh, I run four reds, Saiga versus Kyokyo. Uh, this card has a unique effect. You can only play eight climaxes, by the way. So, this card has a gate type of trigger. Now, what the triggers, uh, I like these ones. These, uh, This one's a soul trigger. In this case, you, it's called, the, in, in Yu-Gi-Oh terms, it's like taking life points. Uh, but in White Watch terms, uh, you take extra damage to your clock, so if you reveal this during a trigger check, you take one extra damage. But for this one, uh, when this card's revealed in response to uh, your attack, instead of gaining damage, when you take damage, uh, you, you pretty much uh, nullify that damage. But when it comes to trigger checking, this card activates and allows you to salvage. In this case, for Yu-Gi-Oh terms, it's pretty much... Oh, not Yu-Gi-Oh terms, in card terms, card definition terms, uh, card game definition terms, I should say. Allows you to take one of your cards, uh, character cards, in your waiting room and put it back to your hand. So I run four of those, and also has a unique effect with, which you can play during the climax step of the turn. But I won't go into it, because it's better if you learn the game from your own play style. Uh, play uh, learning curve. Uh, I also run four. I uh, this card. I don't want to say the name. <laughs> I'm so stupid, so stupid. Uh, I said it. Uh, four book type of characters. Pretty much book character. A uh, book type of trigger. Sorry, not characters. Triggers allow you to draw a card when it's revealed. So when you reveal it, reveal it during your trigger check, you draw a card in the process. And as usual, when you take damage and you reveal it. Uh, a climax card, you nullify that damage. So yeah, uh, I won't explain any more detail because it's going to go too long. And if you want to watch what tutorial, I'll uh, do it for you. But yeah, this is a type of different type of video compared to your normal Yu-Gi-Oh type of uh, video. So yeah, uh, please rate, comment, and subscribe. And I'll see you guys next time. I'll, I will do more Yu-Gi-Oh videos. I promise you. I just want to change the pace when it comes to playing card games. Because I like white Schwartz. It's actually really balanced compared to Yu-Gi-Oh! And yeah, you, it's not as quick, but at least it's more interesting. 
and UK, which is like kind of boring at the moment. So yeah, this is DJ Shirt, signing out. Bye.